Hi guys, before we get to today's episode, I'd like to encourage you, if you are an entrepreneur or startup founder who would like to network with like-minded entrepreneurs and startups to be able to share best practices, tips, and all kinds of information along the way, I'd love to see you join our community. You can head on over to southernstartups.com forward slash slack to join. We look forward to seeing you there. Thanks so much. Hey guys, Jonathan Milspatrick back with you again. I hope you enjoyed Tuesday's episode in that I talked about using assumptions as part of your market research in the very, very, very early phases of your market research for your business and or startup. And assumptions being these things that you think you understand about your business model, about your target market, about all kinds of things, assuming the answers that you know the answers and then going out and validating whether you do or not. Again, the most probably the most important one that I can think of to reshare again today is this idea that if you have plan on having a for-profit business, that customers will pay for your solution. That's an assumption. You're assuming it. You need to go off and validate that that's true or that's not true. Today, I want to talk to you about what is called your minimum criteria for success. And it works in this process of market research and it follows after you've made your assumptions and also after you've done something called a hypothesis. I'm not going to spend a ton of time on that, but just to say that you've done your assumptions again on Tuesday, I talked about creating an Excel spreadsheet. You've got all your assumptions on the left side of your, of the spreadsheet and on the right, you put whether you validated those or not and how you validated them and the information you came up with. In the next step, I always talk to people about going after your assumptions. I assumed these things, I validated or did not validate some of them. And therefore my hypothesis about my startup or idea is X, Y, or Z, right? So my hypo hypothesis is people will pay for a solution that solves this pain point, and pain point and they will pay this much for it. And this percentage of people that I get in front of will pay for it. That could be your hypothesis. Also, by the way, with assumptions and hypotheses, you can have negative assumptions. So people do not want purple skins around my app. I don't know, something crazy like that, right? Not the best example, but there it is. Uh, your hypothesis could be a negative hypothesis. People do not want to have to wash their own car. That could be a, a hypothesis. After your assumption and your hypothesis, I want you to take some time and work on your minimum criteria for success. And it should be built based on what you learned after you made those assumptions and validated them. And after you have a hypothesis for how you are going to go out and solve this pain point. So here's an example of one. I've done some research recently on a product that I manage and I was taking a look at it and uh, we're looking at building a product to solve a pain point. We don't currently have that product. And I was taking a look and after I had done my assumptions and my hypotheses, I then went on and wrote what I consider the minimum criteria for success. And one piece of that was that there would at least be 200 businesses that would pay to have this pain point solved. So I had made assumptions that there was a particular pain point for a business. I then went and wrote my hypothesis based on the validation of that assumption. And now I wrote some minimum criteria for success saying, well, at least 200 businesses will pay for this solution or to solve the pain point that I assumed they did have and which I found out they definitely did have. Why 200? Because when I ran the numbers around the solution and what I thought the pricing was going to be, again, another assumption, I was assuming I was going to charge or be able to charge a certain amount or that the market would bear a certain amount of expense for the solution. Why 200? Because that was going to be the minimum amount I needed to get a very solid return on investment for the company that I'm working with. So assumptions, are followed by a hypothesis are then followed by your minimum criteria for success. Taking that even further in my own example, there needed to be 200 people that were willing to pay for the solution and they were willing to wait over two years. I think it was for that solution to be fully based, to be fully developed, to be out in the marketplace. Why is that an important part of my minimum minimum criteria for success? Because for what we're building, there are already solutions out in the marketplace part of my minimum criteria for success is that we can build at least what those folks offer at least within a reasonable amount of time. And our play is obviously going to be to come in and have some other benefits that those existing competitors don't have. So minimum criteria success is very important in your development process of your idea, because if you can't meet the vast majority, and I would say at least 80% of those things, 
if you can't meet those minimum criteria for success, then you either need to go back to the drawing board and start over or pivot a little bit and come up with a different way to go about your pain point. So using these things, I, I just keep going on this because it's so important for you to do. Using this process, even if you're already in business, is gonna save you tons of time, energy, and money. Because what, we, what I see all the time is you just get so excited. And I get it, I've been in your shoes, you get so excited with getting your business out into the marketplace probably because you see dollar signs or you just want this solution solved so badly and you think others do as well, but you haven't gone through this process of validating everything and doing your research and this process of assumption, validating those assumptions, then having this idea of a hypothesis based on all that information and then taking that and writing, what's the bare minimum I can accept in terms of success in order to make this work and then going off and figuring out if those MCS minimum criteria for success can be met in the first place. It's just a big leap for you. It's going to save you all kinds of money, time and energy. And I be firmly believe it's just going to make you more successful as a startup founder in the first place. Hope that information helps you next week. We'll be back and we'll have uh, some great interviews. We're going to be shifting in the next coming weeks with my startup interviews. A lot of focus is going to be put on marketing because that's one of the things that was commonly asked about besides funding. You, know, you don't have a real business if you don't go out and sell something. And so we're going to be shifting some of our focus, talking about things like SEO best practices for startups, branding best practices for startups, and how to make your marketing simple. I'm going to have some of my friends from the Content Marketing Academy over in the UK on the show. I realize they're not Southern startup founders, but they have fantastic information. They're some of the most talented people that I know in the marketing world, and I can't wait for, to get this information in your hands. Hope you have a great day. We'll see you then. Thanks.